Are they on top? Uh, they on top? Uh, Hello, fellow Raxians. Commander Sirius here. Today, we are going back to surviving your first few hours planet side, and we're going to talk about currency. Now, in the beginning, currency was easy. You basically just had certs. But over the years, some of the currency was changed, a few extra currencies have been added, and the most recent patch expanded currencies even further. So if you're new, or you're returning, you may have not figured out what they all mean, what they all do, what you can do with them, and how to get them. And that's what we're going to go through today. Your most basic currency is a certification, or a cert for short, and that's what everyone calls them. You earn one cert when you earn 250 experience. So let's say you're out there, you're fighting, and you get a kill. You're gonna get a pop-up that tells you how much experience you got from that. A kill is worth 100 experience. Now I got a little more experience in that because of my modifier. These could come from running boosts, it could be you're in the middle of an alert, it could be you're under popped. You can see your current XP modifier percentage in the bottom left corner of your screen on your minimap. Mouse over that number and it will tell you the sources that are generating your current modifier. It doesn't have to be just a kill. You could revive someone, give someone ammo, you can deliver someone in a galaxy. All of these activities give you experience which are converted into certs for every 250 you earn. Why is the currency called certs? Well, its primary use is to increase the capabilities of your soldier. Add abilities, add equipment, etc. The idea is you become certified to use C4, or an advanced medical tool, or an adrenaline shield. Here, I am certifying the use of decoy flares on my Liberator. Now beyond just earning experience, you get certs from other sources. If you're a member, you get 48 certs a day just for logging in. If you win alerts, you get a big dump of certs. You can earn medals on your weapons for your first 10 kills, the 50 following kills, the 100 following kills, and the 1,000 kills after that, every time you earn one of those medals, you get some certs. The last medal is the Araxium Medal, when you're at 1,160 kills, and that grants 200 certifications. Not to mention other fun goodies. Okay, now let's go back to our character screen and take a peek at all the other currencies. Now this is a free-to-play game, so not surprisingly, there is a premium currency. Let's go over that one next. Now, very roughly speaking, $1 equals 100 Daybreak Coins. Generally, if you buy more at one time, you get more bang for your buck. Things you need to know about the premium currency. It is not tradable in-game, and you can't earn it in-game. It is mostly used in the depot, that is the far right tab in your interface screen. This is what you use to buy cosmetic things. Camos, helmet, armor, stuff like that. Now, for the base variants of aircraft, vehicle, or infantry weapons, you can spend Daybreak Coins or Certs to get them. The one improvement of using Daybreak Coins on these things is they unlock across all characters. So if you have a character on all three factions and buy the Archer on your TR character with Certs, it is only on your TR character. If you buy the Archer with Daybreak Coins, it unlocks on all existing characters and all future created characters. Ways you can get this currency. The most basic is just paying for it in the store. If you get a membership, you get 500 Daybreak Coins every month that you have to claim in the depot. And finally, the studio hands out a lot of codes to creators. For example, if you leave a comment on this video, within two weeks of its release, you'll be entered into a drawing for 1,000 Daybreak Coins. There will be three winners. So watch this channel, check out the other creators, watch the live streams, there's a lot of opportunities to pick up some free codes. Okay, next one, let's take a look at Nanites. This currency is simpler than the others. It's what you use to pull your vehicles, your aircraft, and your non-merit-based consumables. You will automatically earn 50 Nanites every 60 seconds. If you are a member, you get an additional 25 Nanites every 60 seconds, and you can boost this by spending Daybreak Cash to buy boosts, 
or buy Nanite Boost with Merit. I have to say I spent plenty of time as a non-member and I've never had trouble with Nanites in the game. I generally ignore them. So if you're tanking a lot or throwing tons of grenades, maybe look into it. But I think in general, this is a currency you won't have to think about. Okay, three currencies down, but there's plenty more to go, fellow Araxians. Next one we are going to talk about is ISO 4. This is the currency used to upgrade implants. And in some cases, you can get implants with it. But I recommend using it all for doing upgrades. Now, if you're going to get into the implant grind, you're going to be converting your certs into ISO 4 eventually. And roughly speaking, 3.3 certs equals 1 ISO 4. Let me give you a quick rundown of how that math works. To buy implants, the most efficient way to do it is to buy a deluxe implant pack. For 750 nanites, you will get 9 implants. Any non-exceptional implant that is a duplicate will break down into 25 ISO 4. So that means you get 225 ISO 4 per deluxe implant pack. Now let me explain why buying deluxe implant packs is the only way I recommend grinding ISO 4. If you buy basic implant packs for 300 certs, you've increased your cert spend per ISO 4 from 3.3 to 4. It's just straight up less efficient. And let me explain why I never really use the ISO 4 recyclers. They do have a much higher chance for a rare implant. The problem is they slow your progression through the system. My intention was to unlock and max rank every non-exceptional implant, which I've done. In that process, where I used no ISO recyclers, I unlocked all but two of the exceptional implants. Here, you can see me using some ISO recyclers after that grind, and I am getting exceptional implants, but ones that I already have. An ISO 4 recycler costs 500 ISO 4, and as long as you get an exceptional implant that's a duplicate, you get that back. The reason they're a trap, though, is that the house always wins. You can see after I get a few exceptional implants, hoping for one I don't have, in the end I lose the round of gambling and my 500 ISO 4 is converted into 25 ISO 4 for an implant I have no interest in. If you have no exceptionals and you want some, sure, recyclers are a great way to go. You will get some with those. But if you intend to grind the whole system, get all the implants and get them all ranked up, buy deluxe implant packs only. The exceptionals will come with time. Now in the implant tab, there is an option to craft implants. That is, if you feel like you just can't get a specific one you want, as long as it's not exceptional, you can spend to craft it directly, rather than having to continually unlock crates. Again, great for getting what you want, much less efficient than being patient and just unlocking a bunch of deluxe packs. Okay, happy ISO 4 and implant grinding, let's move on to the next one. And that one is A7, and that was introduced with the Escalation patch. Now this currency has two sources. You can either participate in alerts to earn it, or you can find it on data terminals. Let's talk about the data terminals first. You're looking for blue glowing dots that will most likely pop up on terminals throughout the map. They do emit a sound when you are nearby them. It's faint for sure, but it might help you pick up on them. And then you just interact with them much like you would in SCU. I've gotten random numbers in the 30s for the few consoles I have found. And then let's talk about the more reliable way to earn it, and that is participating in alerts. You don't have to win the alert to get it, you just have to be there at the end. The amount you get is based on the percentage of the alert that you were there. So if you were there for 45 minutes out of the 90 minutes, you get 50% of the reward. It's also worth pointing out that winning alerts is a good way to earn ISO 4 and certs as well. You can see in my chat box what I received. So unlike ISO or certs, which have a lot of different ways to come by it, A7 is very specific to alerts. The consoles are rare enough that I don't recommend really factoring them in as a way you're going to grind A7. With how active the continents are and how easy it is to pop up alerts, it's usually possible to find a continent with one going. 
So to grind this resource, just make sure you're on the continent with the alert. You spend this resource in the sanctuary, you can see an icon pop up for it in the mini map that leads you to the right vendor. You can buy things like Infradine, which replaces your med kits with a 20 to 30 second use of Infravision. You can also buy a variety of unique weapons, which I'd say in general aren't as good as the original, but unlock a fun different style of play based on their original weapon variant. These black market items, as they're called, have the potential to leave the shop in the future when different ones are released, but right now they are all available. Okay, and finally, let's talk about the last one on this screen. That is Merit. It was introduced along with A7 in the Escalation patch. You get Merit every time you capture or defend a base. The Merit is part of a loyalty rank grind within your outfit. But not only do you achieve loyalty ranks within your outfit for it, you get to spend your merit in the sanctuary. You do have the option to buy cosmetics, 30 minute experience boosts, or nanite boosts. But the real game changer here is the infantry classes now have a tactical slot. Where you can equip some of these things you purchase with merit, that is the auxiliary spitfire that any class can drop, the caltrop, the cordium bomb, or the hard light canopy. All of these items have an upfront cost with merit. When you need to resupply, it does use merit, but in a much smaller amount than the upfront cost. You can also get a pocket version of the flash, which are consumable and need to be restocked in the sanctuary. Again, you can follow your mini map to the vendor with the merit icon in it in the sanctuary. And you can click through the different tabs for boosts and utilities, appearance, infantry gear, or deployables that you can purchase for Merit. I find Merit very easy to earn while you're just naturally playing the game. If you so desire, there are Merit boosts available in the depot. So fellow Raxians, with that, we have been through every currency that is listed on your character screen. Remember, if you can't find a place to spend it in the depot or your character screen, head to the sanctuary. Please remember that most of this currency has caps. Merit is capped at 20,000. A7 is capped at 5,000. ISO is capped at 100,000. Certs, if you're not a member, are capped at 10,000. 50,000 if you are a member. Nanites max out at 750. Now I want to take you through a couple currencies that are not on that screen and are a little more obscure. On your character screen, one tab will say ASP skills. That stands for Advanced Specialization. This is a prestige system, so to speak. Once you reach battle rank 100, you can opt to reset yourself to battle rank zero and level your character to max rank 100 for a second time. You either need a membership or to spend 10,000 certs to get the ASP system. When you do that, you immediately get one ASP point. From there, you get an ASP point every 25 battle ranks allowing you to achieve four more on your way to BR100. All skills are one point, so you get five ways to customize your character in the ASP system. And finally, let's have a quick chat about outfit resources. The green icon is Araxium, the blue icon is Synthium, and the purple icon is Polystellarite. The purple is earned from the center bases on the map, for example, Isotech Plant or the Crown. Blue is earned from facilities like biolabs, amp stations, or tech plants. And the Araxium is earned from large and small outposts. When you take a facility, you will earn these resources for your outfit, whether your name is on it or not. But if your outfit scores well enough and you get to put your name on that facility, you will get resource ticks every minute based on how many facilities you control and their respective resource contribution. People with the appropriate ranks in the outfit can spend those resources on things like orbital strikes, citadel shields, or they can craft bastion fleet carriers with them. In order for outfits to not hoard the war assets, there is a maximum allowable 300 weight, and as you can see, each item has a specific weight assignment. Most medium or large outfits will have an abundance of these resources, but they do need to pick and choose wisely what they keep in stock for war assets. 
Okay, fellow Araxians, that's the rundown on currency in Planetside 2. I hope that was illuminating or demystifying. While we're on the topic of currency, I want to bring up a real-life currency called BAT, or the Basic Attention Token. This is the currency of a browser called Brave that seeks to put control back in the user's hands. You can either block ads entirely, or you can opt into them and earn some of the currency. If you're looking for a browser that will help protect your privacy, speed up load times and give you control over how many ads you see, you can check the description for a link to download the Brave browser. Bookmarks and Chrome extensions all transfer over. Okay, fellow Araxians, thanks a bunch for watching. Thank you to all my subscribers, the serious soldiers you see here. If you're finding this video when it's fresh, we very recently finished up the qualification round of Alpha 2 of Outfit Wars. And the matches are coming up the following weekend. I will be out there casting them, so I hope you will stop by, say hi, and cheer on the competing outfits. To anyone that is discovering these videos as a new player, please drop a comment, let me know what else you need to know to survive your first few hours planet side without getting too frustrated. But that's gonna do it for now, fellow Araxians. Until next time, I will see you, planet side.